impact. The Vortex Impact 4000 Rifle Mounted Laser Range Finder. Now, if you're like me, you've been excited about this thing ever since you found out about its release. Mine showed up just the other day, and I just wrapped up my second day on the range getting to shoot this thing out to some pretty crazy distances. So with that experience, what I hope to do is put together an initial impressions video where I can give you an idea around my thoughts after two days on the range using this. What does the zeroing process look like? How accurate is it with bullet drop out to distance? How easy to use is it? Does it return to zero? Probably everything that you've been asking yourself, I hope to cover in this video. Now what you're gonna find in this video is I'm only using the rangefinder. I haven't even fired up the app yet. I really wanted to find out rangefinder alone, how easy is it to use without the additional app? So that's what you're gonna see in this video. I'm gonna shoot only the rangefinder. We're gonna click through menus using the buttons on top. I briefly read the manual. There's a quick start guide that's included in the box. I watched a video online from Vortex that was about 45 minutes long that ran through everything on this rangefinder before I hit the range. And then when I got out here, I just started playing with this thing to see how easy to use it is and how long did it take me to get on steel using the Impact 4000. So with that, let's move into a gear review and then we'll move into a small sections on each of the topics that I hope to cover in this video. And finally, I'll wrap up with my thoughts around where this thing makes sense. This is not a cheap piece of equipment. It's quite affordable given the space that it's in and the competitors that it's up against, but it's still several thousand dollars. So you're probably asking yourself, is this a good buy? And I hope by the end of this video to give you that idea so that you can make a decision for yourself. If you've been around my channel for any time at all, you know I'm gonna start with a gear review to give you an idea of what we're running throughout this video. So for a rifle, I'm shooting my Barrett AMRAD and 6.5 Creedmoor. This thing is super easy to shoot and it's very accurate. I love shooting this rifle just because it's so light recoiling and efficient out to a thousand yards, maybe even a little bit further. Suppressor on this is my Surefire 762 SOCOM Mini Can. This thing is very versatile. I've used it on many rifles on this channel. I love shooting this, knocks the blast down, makes it a little bit easier. Just wear an electronic ear pro. For an optic, we're gonna run my Night Force 7 to 35 Attacker F1 with a Trimmer 3 reticle. With a tool like this Impact 4000, I feel like that Trimmer 3 reticle is a really nice addition to the system to make it easier to hold over to make your impacts. So in theory, you should be able to range with the impact, get your ballistic solution, how much to hold over and what your windage will be, hold that in the reticle and make hits. Now, if you stick around, you're gonna find out how well this thing works, so stay tuned. I'd also love to hear in the comments at this point, what are you thinking? What do you think about this Impact 4000? Is this gonna be a valuable piece of kit to add to a practical precision rifle? Is the ballistic calculator gonna hold true out to distance? So while I work through this video, let me know your thoughts on that. So for ammo, we're gonna be shooting the 135 A-tip load from Ally Munitions. So Ally Munitions has stepped up. They're a great partner for the channel. Yes, they provided this ammunition. This is one of their own loadings. So this is premium long range rifle ammunition. Now what you're gonna see here, before I shoot this rifle out to distance, I had to move down to 100 yards where I got this rifle zeroed and I fired five rounds without the chronograph to get an idea of how it groups. So what you'll see in this picture, those five rounds stacked just under an inch, call it 0.9 inches, 0.8, really doesn't matter to me, it's under one MOA, and I'm happy with that for a long range precision rifle. I also fired five rounds across the chronograph, and you'll find that those five rounds averaged 2830 feet per second with an SD in the mid-teens. Now an SD in the mid-teens, that's decent, that'll get us out to distance with no problems, really, with a 6.5 Creedmoor. But what I did notice when I scrolled through the five rounds, one of those rounds, the second round, actually bumped quite high at 2859 or so, whereas the rest of the other four were stacked in that 2820, 2830. So really it was just one round that pushed high that kind of pushed that SD up. The rest of the four rounds were very consistent. That said, under one MOA, a nice SD, decent velocity with a very efficient bullet like the 135A tip, we're gonna get out to a thousand yards without any trouble. It's also worth mentioning Ally Munitions, they stepped up and they were able to get me one of these Vortex Impact 4000s very early. They didn't send this one to me free of charge. I paid my own money for this unit as I am really excited to see how this pairs with a practical precision rifle. I think it's gonna be a great piece of kit. I'm excited to use it or excited to show you what I've been able to do with it as I am really, really happy with the performance I've been seeing. So that's the kit we're gonna use. From here, let's move into some of the details around the Impact 4000 
and what I've learned while using this out here on the range. First up, we'll talk packaging. I was very impressed with the package the Impact 4000 came in. Came in a nice box with all tools and manuals included. So anything you need to operate the Impact 4000 was right there in the box, very protected, very nice packaging, very quality is the feel that I got. Before mounting your Impact 4000, you're gonna wanna run through the calibration process. This is quite simple and quite intuitive as you navigate to the settings and then you get into your calibrations and when you begin calibrations, the unit is gonna tell you step-by-step step what to do. Now, the calibration process is a little bit kind of awkward or strange because you have to wave the unit in a figure eight like this. You have to spin it horizontally, spin it vertically, flip it on its side, on each side and spin vertically. And while you're doing that, if you watch the screen, you'll see a countdown that's gonna tell you exactly where you are in the process. Assuming that you pass the calibration, it'll say calibration passed, and then you would be good to go ahead and mount the unit onto your rifle. Now it was while I was doing these calibrations that I noticed this screen doesn't work with polarized glasses. So when I flipped it on its side, the screen went black. I had to tilt my head to be able to see what the screen was actually saying. Not a huge deal if you're gonna be mounting it vertically or horizontally like this, as I can see the screen through my polarized glasses, but when you get it on its side, it was hard to see with polarized glasses. From there, to get the Impact 4000 mounted, there was a tool that was included in the packaging. Really easy to throw it on top of one of these diving board type mounts. And then on the side here, you've got a couple of nuts that you can tighten down. And there's an included tool that allows you to torque this probably close to spec. I didn't put a ton of torque on these. This thing's really not going anywhere. Very easy to get it mounted. Then the next thing I wanted to run through and just click through the menus to get a feel for how to navigate the Impact 4000. So to navigate the Impact 4000, there's a set of buttons here on the top. It's really, really intuitive. In the front there, you've got the range button in the center of four keypads. So the range button and then the four around it allow you to navigate through menus and then certainly range targets. And then on the back side, you have your settings button as well as your windage settings type button. So the two buttons here on the back side that you can also use to add and navigate through the menus. So in the settings menus, there's a couple of them. There are settings for the Impact 4000, things like auto shut off, things like what units it's gonna measure in. Then you also have settings for the actual load. So there's 10 rifles that you can save into here or 10 loads that you can save. They each have their own ballistic coefficient, velocity, bullet details. So with 10 of those saved, you can go in and save common loads that you're gonna run or common rifles if you're gonna move this unit around. Really easy to navigate. Again, I read the manual quickly, I watched a video quickly, and then I just started playing with buttons and found out that it was really easy to navigate and it felt very natural on the unit without using the app. So the next thing we needed to do with this Impact 4000 is get it zeroed. Now the zero process is actually very simple. So if you look at my scope right here, use this, I'm gonna call this zero. So this is gonna be my zero height or a number zero. Then on this tall spur mount, I measure from my zero height or the center line of sight of my optic up to the laser. What I found is a distance of three inches. So I'm three inches from the center of the optic up to the laser. Now, you can set your target out at 100 yards. The package includes a piece of paper that you can use for zeroing. That's great, really simple, but that's not what I used. So I zeroed out here in the full sunlight. And what you're gonna see is that this Impact 4000, the visible laser, you're not gonna be able to see it out here in full sunlight like this. You're gonna have to wait until dusk or use the reflective tape that Vortex includes. But a trick that I found, if you park your pickup truck downrange, lower your tailgate, and then fire your laser into the back of the pickup, you can pick it up in the shadows. And then when you hit your license plate, it's gonna reflect beautifully. So I'll try to put a picture of that here. So that is the setup that I used out here in full sunlight. Now back to my zeroing, how I actually set this up. So Vortex recommends a line of sight zero so that nothing is converging. So that's what I wanted to do, given that was a recommendation. So knowing that my unit was three inches high, at 100 yards, one mil is 3.6 inches. So rather than guessing out there on where to zero, I wanted to figure out an actual mil measurement. So if I do three divided by 3.6, I get 0.8. So that tells me a perfect line of sight zero for this setup where it's three inches tall like this is 0.8 mils. So to zero it, I use the windage adjustment here. 
the elevation adjustment here, to move my laser in my reticle to be 0.8 above my center crosshairs. So I'm zero my center crosshairs at 100 yards, and I put my laser 0.8 mils. It kind of washes out when you're looking out there. So 0.8 to 1 mil above my center crosshair. Now that is really important to note because when you're running this Impact 4000, in order for it to range correctly, you have to have your elevation turret zeroed. So at your 100 yard zero. If you have dialed up to make a shot or dialed down to make a shot, that changes the zero of the Impact 4000. And when you go 0.8 to range, it will not be accurate. So what you're gonna see in this video, when I range, I hold my center crosshair 0.8 mils below what I'm trying to range. So very simple to get it zeroed, very intuitive so long as you can see the laser. And as I mentioned, something reflective will do that for you. Now, to get it set up for ballistics. So I'm shooting a 6.5 Creedmoor 135 A-tip with a G7 BC of 0.321, a velocity of 2830, a bullet length of 1.383 as I found online. Side height of 2.75 on this rifle. Now what you're gonna see is I'm able to go in through my menus and navigate down to the profiles. From the profiles, I can choose bullet and rifle, and then I can go in and edit each of those details. So in the clip that I'm showing, you're gonna see I go in and I put the exact information that I found either online for the bullet or the true velocity that I found or the measurement. You have to make sure that you're putting good information in to get good information out. And then from there, ranging is very simple. You basically, as I mentioned, hold 0.8 mils below your aiming, your 100 yard zero, and then you hit the range mark. And when you do that, it's gonna flash right here on the screen. It's gonna give you a distance in yards. So out of the box, it's gonna measure in yards. You have to make sure before you shoot out to distance, you go into the settings and you change it over to the ballistic ranging method. And I'll show you how I do that here. So in order to get your ballistic calculation information, you have to make sure it's set to the ballistic setting. Out of the box, that won't be the case, and that took me a second to figure that out. Once you get it set to the ballistics, then it will show you a distance as well as an elevation and a windage correction. Now, the windage correction on this is very simple. On the back side of the unit, you have a button specifically for windage. That'll take you into a menu where you can click up and down on your keypad to adjust wind speed, and then left and right, to adjust windage direction and the icon there is very simple to follow. So it is really, really easy in my opinion to get the ballistic set up and to get the windage set up. So super simple, very intuitive once you start clicking around, nothing to be intimidated about. Now ranging performance, this is crazy. So obviously I'm out here in some pretty wide open spaces and what you're gonna see in this video clip, that bluff out there behind me, I was able to range that at roughly 3,400 yards. So no problem getting way out there with this Impact 4000. It even gave me a ballistic drop information for getting out to that kind of distance. Now, for true distances out here, obviously I was ranging steel, but then on one of the sessions where I was shooting out there at about 1,600 yards, I saw some antelope out beyond my targets, kind of over the berm. And I was actually able to range one of those antelopes at 2,000 yards. So pretty cool to be able to range an animal at that kind of distances. So as far as mounting it, zeroing it, navigating through the menus, I feel like it's super simple and very intuitive. Now from here, let's move into the shooting performance so that I can give you an idea of how well this thing actually tracks to the ballistics of my rifle. So before we fire this rifle up, let me give you an idea of what we're gonna do. So I've got a handful of targets set up. My plan with the rifle is to show you how it performs from about 400 yards out to a thousand or a little bit beyond based on how it's performing. So I'm gonna get into position. I'm gonna use the Impact 4000, no other apps. I'm gonna range the steel that I mentioned in the video. And then I'm going to use the ballistic information that's displayed in the Impact 4000 to shoot. I'm gonna give you a view through the scope so that you can see exactly what I'm seeing. And we're gonna engage targets until I can no longer make confident hits. So with that, let's move into the first target, which is a 12 inch circle. Let's put some rounds down range using the Vortex Impact. I've got 135A tips loaded up and I've got some steel out there for us to shoot at. This first piece of steel is a 12 inch circle, kind of quartered to us, it's not a full plate. So I'm at one mil below my 100 yard zero. I'll range that. 
450 yards. It's calling for 1.8 mils. And with the wind that's kind of coming from our 2 to 3 o'clock, about 5 miles an hour that I programmed in, it's calling for me to hold right 0.2. I actually feel like it's a little bit of a strong wind call. So I'm not going to come off of plate. So 1.86. Kind of right edge of plate, roughly 0.2. And Pat? And Pat? And Pat? So let's transition over now to a two thirds zip stick out here. So I'm one mil below my target. 602, calling for three mils. And right, 0.3. And Pat? 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 So far, I'd say the impact is just about spot on. Let's push out a little bit further. I had to reset my cameras so I could get on my full size Ipsic out here at about a thousand yards. Let's get an exact distance. I'll come under the target about 0.8. And that measures 1,003 yards. We're gonna hold it over seven mils. It's calling for right 0.5, but I believe windage conditions have changed. It is perfectly calm out here. I mean, perfect. So I'm gonna send the first round holding, let's just go dead center, seven mils. Impact. Impact. One more for good measure. Impact. So I'd say my elevation was just about spot on, out to a thousand. As you saw, windage isn't exactly what this thing was calling for, but certainly it doesn't know that it's exactly calm out here. I didn't make that adjustment. Just as a shooter, I needed to know that. So from here, let's see if we can push out further. Impressive performance so far out of the Vortex. With that, let's push on further on that full-size Ipsic. So I've moved to a different shooting position. Should be about 1,200 yards. With that, I'm going to hold under that target by about 0.8 mils where I'm zeroed. We range 1213, which is an elevation of 9.5 mils. So I've zoomed my scope in so you can get a better view. We're at about 20 power. With that, I need to actually dial up so that you can see what's going on out there. Now windage on this is calling for right 0.5, but again, I think conditions have changed a bit since I uh, set it. So I am going to hold. I mean, it feels dead calm. Let's go dead on with this first round. Impact. First round hit at 1220. I'm sorry, 1213. All right, that went right off the right edge. Hard to see my level with the Tacticam installed. Pack. Pack. 
All right. Wind must have died on that one. Elevation looked good. Impact. So we're hammering away out there at 1200. Let's go ahead and wrap this thing up. So now that we've finished our range day, you're going to find that you're going to have to remove the Impact 4000 to fit this into your rifle case. The Barrett, for example, comes from Barrett with the foam already cut for the rifle and a scope. No way it'll fit in the Pelican with the Impact 4000 installed. So that's going to beg the question, does this unit return to zero when you remove it and reinstall it? So I tested that last night. When I finished the range yesterday, I had to remove the Impact 4000 and then reinstall it this morning when I got back to the range. I then immediately took my pickup truck down range where I checked return to zero. Now what I found is it's not exact. It wasn't exactly return to zero, but it was close enough that I could have started shooting and had no problems. So best I can tell looking through my optic again, that laser washes out a little bit when I'm looking at the license plate on my pickup. It looked to me when I reinstalled it this morning, the point of impact of the laser had shifted to the right about 0.3 mils. So again, nothing huge, but definitely something to be aware of. From an elevation standpoint, it was basically right where it needed to be. It was just off a little bit horizontally. So while it's not perfect return to zero, 0.3 mils is roughly one MOA. So I can't argue with that. That is very respectable and acceptable performance, given you're going to have to remove this unit and reinstall it. So from here, let's go ahead and wrap up, and I'll give you my thoughts around running this, and is it worth your money? All right, so you've stuck around this long. That tells me that you are interested and probably pondering the purchase of an Impact 4000. So with that, let me know in the comments down below, what did you think about this video? This is my first attempt doing kind of a product review. I wanted to do this again. I purchased this with my own money. I'm just excited about this product. I think this thing is a game changer for the average practical precision rifleman. So for me, where I'm shooting out here in wide open spaces, I think this thing makes a ton of sense. So with that, let me run through kind of my thoughts on shooting this and do I feel like it lives up to the price tag? This thing is not cheap, but it is quite affordable given the other options on the market. So with that, let's move right into it. So the first thing that I found myself super impressed with is how well this thing ranges. To be able to hit that bluff out there at 3,400 yards, which is roughly two miles, that is crazy for any rangefinder, especially a rifle mounted one. Then I moved down, I hit those antelope at 2,000 yards. That is awesome. The steel, I had no problem ranging all the way out to 1,600. So ranging capability, I am very impressed. You think about a rifle-mounted rangefinder, really easy to range with that. You've got, in this case, 35 power to be able to look through and range. You've got a very stable platform. This thing has got a zero point that is very defined. So this is a great ranging platform. I love ranging with this. I've used the Wilcox Raptor previously in content. This thing, I believe, actually from a ranging perspective, outperforms the Raptar. I've been able to range much further with this than I've ever had a reading on my Raptar. So very impressive ranging performance. Navigating through this unit, I felt like was very intuitive using the keypads on top. A little bit of a learning curve there, but if you spend some time clicking through menus and trying out the different settings and what they're doing, I felt like it was very intuitive. There's a ton more that this unit will do that I didn't even get into, but for me, I wanted to take this thing out of the box, get out here on the range and start making impacts. Sure, there's a lot of really cool futures that maybe I'll get into as I get more experience, but from an initial impressions perspective, very easy to get this out of the box and start using it as a tool to increase my hit percentage. So with that, I'm really, really happy with my purchase. Now, the gravy on that is how well the ballistic calculator works. So what you saw in this video, I engaged a 12 inch circle at uh, what was that about 450, 470, I can't remember exactly, with no problems. Elevation hold was perfect. Then we went out to 600 yards on the two thirds zipsic, made a ton of hits, no problem. Ballistic calculation was spot on. Full size zipsic out there at 1000, ballistic calculation for drop was spot on. 1210, 1220, made a first round hit. How crazy is that? First round impact with any rifle, really but uh, using the shooting solution that I pulled out of this Impact 4000. So really, really happy with how well this thing performed. Now I didn't include the full clip in this video because it was a lot of misses, but I got greedy out here. I had some rounds left. I actually shot the full size Ipsic out to 1600 yards. I only went one for 11, but my shooting conditions were pretty tough out there. I was shooting into a berm 
that was shaded. I did not have my impact light out there, so I just could not see my impacts to make corrections. I did make one impact. I saw the plate move. I saw the dust fly, and I heard it. And then I saw a couple of the misses, and the misses that I saw were windage misses. I was able to catch dust. The elevation looked about right. So I feel like if I was in better conditions, I probably could have made some more hits out there at 1600. My guess is the elevation was very close. I didn't see anything that really alarmed me. So from a ballistic calculation, man, this thing was almost spot on. I couldn't ask for anything more. Windage wise, as you saw in the video, I didn't get that in depth with the wind. It's cool to play with. I'm going to need to get more experience there. Really easy to use, but uh, as you found out here today, it's very calm, and I found myself just reverting to my old methods of holding based on what I was seeing downrange and based on what my gut was telling me. So really, really happy. You know, I've used my shooter app previously in every one of my videos. Didn't use that at all, and I feel like this thing got me the same as, if not more hits than that shooter app ever did. The reason for that is this thing is measuring real-time atmosphere conditions. So there's a screen in here you can go pull up your specific atmosphere conditions. For me, earlier today, it was like 8,000 feet density altitude. You know, humidity was down in the 24%. It's just really cool to have an onboard weather station available to you. That's something I sold. I had a handheld unit that had a, a windage tool on it, ballistic calculator. I sold that years ago. I didn't really see the value in that tool, but this with the rangefinder mounted on the rifle, ballistic calculator, I feel like is an awesome setup for the practical precision rifleman. And then from there, return to zero, easy to zero. You know, I felt like ease of use is there on the unit. Now, I'll go ahead and wrap this up. I feel like I'm rambling. I appreciate you sticking around this long. Is this tool worth the money? For myself, the answer to that is yes. So I'm seeing a street price of roughly $2,000. You think about what you're getting for $2,000. You're getting an impressive rangefinder that's going to range out to 3,400 yards or 2,000 on animals, maybe even further. Haven't tested it. So you're getting a crazy good rangefinder. You're getting an onboard ballistic calculator that is real time correcting for atmospheric conditions. And then, you know, you're getting a tool from Vortex that's got the lifetime warranty. So, in my opinion, when you look at the other options on the market like this, you're pushing $8,000 plus in the Wilcox Raptor and some of the other units. I feel like this thing, if you're not shooting at night, is a great tool. And that brings up an interesting point. So, you think about my Wilcox Raptor. It's got IR laser, IR illuminator. And some of the things I've seen online is, you know, this is a cool tool, but it doesn't have infrared. Okay, you're right. Not everybody shoots at night. That's actually quite rare. So, if you're shooting in the daytime, this is a great tool. And then maybe you find yourself shooting at night. All you have to do is slap an IR illuminator on your rifle. So you've already got your rangefinder zeroed. You've already got your ballistic information on the rifle. Slap your illuminator on and boom. Now you've got a nighttime setup for way cheaper than any of the Wilcox Raptors, even on the used market. So in my opinion, if you've got the extra cash and you're into practical long range precision rifle shooting, maybe you know on an open range like this where maybe unknown targets or you're hunting, you're hunting varmints, etc a great piece of kit. So I'm very excited for my purchase. You'll see this showing up in more videos very soon. I want to get more time behind it. Maybe I'll do a follow-up review down the road, but initial impressions, I'm very happy. I do believe it's worth the money. So with that, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this content, I hope you'll help me grow my channel. The best way to do that is to like this video, comment. I got to hear your thoughts. What do you think about this video? And then from there, subscribe. And if you subscribe, it's free for you to do. You'll be in line for more content like this. I've seen a ton of growth recently, and I really appreciate that. I have plans to put out a ton more content through the end of this year. I'm going to try to increase my video count. So if you subscribe, you'll be there for every one of my new video drops. Finally, don't forget to check me out on Instagram at Mountains Mullets America. It's a great place for us to interact. So with that, thanks for watching. Check me out in my next video. I'm excited for you to check it out. I'm excited about what's coming for the channel. So thank you.